modern layouts are built with mobile devices in mind from the start. It's easier to build a mobile layout when you're first starting out because you don't have to worry about any of the complex feature of wider desktop layouts. Mobile layouts are usually simple one-column layouts because of the narrow screen width on a mobile device. This is easier than creating a complex layout on the desktop first, then trying to figure out how to arrange it for smaller screens. When we use a mobile-first layout approach with CSS, we serve the basic layout styles and the minimal amount of code to style a page for a small mobile device first. Then, using media queries, we add breakpoints, which adjust the layout for wider screens and devices. In other words, we define all the common layout styles before adding any media queries. You can check the teacher's notes of this video for more resources and videos about the mobile-first approach. I'm going to start with a really simple example of mobile-first layout. So the current styles in the CSS apply to all browsers, from phones to desktop computers. However, on a small screen, the 70% width of the container makes less sense because it's going to look too narrow on the screen. So I should expand the container so that it fills the smaller screen of a mobile device. So I'm going to define one media query in my CSS. So first, I'll select and copy one of the main comment flags in my CSS and paste it at the very bottom of my style sheet. And I'll change the text to media queries because this is where I'll add any media queries. So right below the comment flag, I'm going to create a new media query by typing at media. Now the mobile first approach uses the min width media feature since you're building the layout up from narrow screens to wider screens. I want this media query to target any device or viewport width that's 769 pixels or wider. So I'm going to set the min width value to 769 pixels. The mobile first approach is the approach we'll use from this point forward. So throughout the course, we're going to add advanced layout styles and overrides for larger screens inside this media query. I'm going to start with one simple CSS rule so you can see the mobile first in action. So every browser from phones to desktop will load the CSS outside the media query. These are the base rules that define the common styles shared across all screen sizes and devices. And only those devices that are 769 pixels or wider will load the CSS inside this media query. So I want the container elements to be 100% wide in small screens. So they should take up the full width of the screen. So back in my style sheet, I'm going to remove the width and margin declarations from the base container rule. So I'm going to select both declarations and cut it out of the container rule. Then I'm going to declare them inside the media query instead. So inside the media query, I'll create a new rule that targets container and I'll paste in the width and margin declarations inside this container rule. And I'm also going to add a max width value of 1000 pixels so that the layout container does not get any wider than 1000 pixels in larger screens. I also want to give my layout containers left and right padding to separate the content from the left and right margins of the page. So I'm going to add the padding properties in the base container rule since they'll be shared by all screens and devices. So I'll add a padding left property first, and I'll set the value to 1M. And below that, I'll set the padding right value to 1M as well. So when I save my style sheet and take a look at my layout in the browser, we can see that there's some nice white space around the content and small screens. Now in a later video, we'll use the space that opens up when the viewport is 769 pixels or wider to display horizontal columns in our layout. If I open my developer tools and inspect any of the container divs, I can see that the left and right padding I apply to the container elements makes the layout wider than 70% of the browser 
and it's going to make it wider than the 1000 pixel max width I applied to the container. Well, that's because it's adding the 1M of padding on both sides to its total width. Now, I want the layout's width to be exactly 70% of the browser viewport and the max width to be exactly 1000 pixels. So this is a quirky CSS box model behavior you've seen before in previous CSS courses. So I'm going to use the box sizing property to prevent any padding and border width values from expanding and possibly breaking my layout containers as I add more content to the page. Back in my style sheet, I'm going to create a new rule up top in my base rules using the universal selector so that every element inherits this box sizing declaration. In the rule, I'm going to type the box sizing property and set the value to border box. The value border box forces the padding and borders into the width and height of the elements instead of expanding them. So now my containers take up exactly 70% of the viewport width and the max width will be exactly 1000 pixels. Now I've posted a lot of helpful articles and videos about mobile first and the box sizing property in the teacher's notes of this video. Up next, I'll show you how to keep the footer at the bottom of the page at all times and remove any gaps between the bottom of the viewport and the footer.